Wow, we are becoming so pros. Yeah, 90 more episodes and we're going to be amazing <laughs> at it. Welcome everybody to the 10th episode of the Two Facet Podcast. This is actually a second part, so it's we have two numbers in this episode, no? It's like the 10th episode and the second part of the design sprint yes, topic. So yes. today uh, we're going to be talking. Uh, we, meaning me, Matt Mikulski, uh, the product manager, and my co-host... Um, yeah, I'm Hunkal, I'm a product designer. Yeah. So, Hunkal, <laughs> last time we met, we talked a bit about the design sprints. Uh, we basically covered the first day. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just to sum up to the listeners, so in the previous episode, we've wrapped up what you do on the first day, meaning who should be in the design sprint, when you should run the design sprint, how to prepare to it, and then how to run the first day. And we ended at our participants finish their sketches. So yes. they know their long-term goals, they know everything what they need to do, they benchmark that with other ideas, and they produced some visuals at the end of the day. So, uh, we are in the day two, everybody meets on a coffee, what happens now? Exactly, so what happens now is that everybody will go to the room again, or to the mirror world, and we have what it's called the art room, okay, or the art museum, art gallery, something like okay. that. So the participants should find either in the room, or either in the mirror board, all the solutions that they drew the, the last day, all the final solutions. So if you have six participants, you should have six of them. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> in theory, this solution should be self-explanatory, yeah. but there's like a, like a step <laughs> in between. So at the end of the first day, people do them, and in theory, they are self-explanatory, but in my experience, they never fully are. <laughs> yeah, 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 there are sometimes the concepts. Yeah, yeah. So, so to fix that, two things can you can do, or at least I've done. So either, especially if it's digital, you can have them, so the facilitator can gather them and can make small tweaks or ask the, the author to add more notes or mm-hmm. external, so a bit of a review of it okay. to make sure it's clear. Maybe if it's on paper or if you don't want to do that and stuff, another tweak is to have the people explain ah, okay. the, so like the concept. A quick pitch. Like a quick pitch. Okay, one more Everyone. hack that I would sell that I, I did a few times is so I'm not good with hand design. Like I can design in Figma, but my lines are not good in hand, <laughs> when done in hand. So a lot of times when I'm showing someone a paper design, they totally don't understand my lines. They're like, <laughs> they look at it and like, oh, there is avatar. I think it is avatar, right? So I'm not the best one. So what I'm doing usually is like adding a super super short post-its mm-hmm. next to the main components I believe are crucial to the design. So it's like. I would do a sidebar that would be shit and it would be just bullet list, but I would add the you know post it saying it would be a sidebar with customization options. Please don't make me draw like draw customization options. So like small stickers saying like hey this concept is this if you don't notice by the visual you see right now. So so this exactly. is the hack I'm using too. It's super good and it's totally fine. Yeah. So you're helping explain the, the But solution. it's important not to put too much too much pitch there. Actually I <laughs> I did this in past, didn't work well. I mean, people can get pitched by it. So then the next part that we'll talk in a second can be broken if you add too much information there. So mm-hmm. it's just explain the concept and not trying to pitch it that I will have a customizable sidebar because our customers need that. And you know, there are <laughs> cases when it's a difference between the user type and things like this. So this you should probably skip, just like keep it to the core of the Just concept. the basic yeah, solution, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, as well. And also, even though sometimes I saw you doing it in digital, like in a digital yeah. program, uh, it's, it's more recommended to do it in actual paper, like drawing. Yeah. Because otherwise, sometimes your head uh, gets a bit lost on, okay, which tool am I going to use? Uh, now how I draw line? Because if you're not using design tools on a daily basis, yeah. Then, then you might lose frequent. a lot of time with the tool, whereas with the paper, it should be super quick. Yeah. Even if you're remote, people will draw it on a paper and then take a picture. So Yeah, and it worked a few times with, with our design sprints. And then, yeah, I was doing some <laughs> digital stuff. But, but never high level, like, yeah, just to, to give to people, because sometimes maybe the picture will not really work or you mm-hmm. are really shitty with drawing. Um, then easy stuff like paint or draw.io, not going for Figma and looking for the design kit for the next mm-hmm. two days, mm-hmm. not going to Sketch or Photoshop, just like paint. 
it's digital enough and allows you to drive like draw straight lines. And at the same time, you're not gonna spend too much time thinking about hmm, this button state should be this or that. Maybe you know. <laughs> You're the designer, you know how it is. I, I would recommend always a paper, but if yeah. you really are fast with a tool and you're not going to lose any time with the tool, then you can do it as yeah. well. I mean, it's just so totally fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, Drew, uh, we have explanations about the concepts, so we put them on the wall. No, mm -hmm. that, That's what we were doing when, when doing that remote design sprint. Yeah, you like would put them on a the wall. Yeah. Next to each other, so they... Yeah. If you're on a digital board, as well, you put them like... On the digital board and what you're going to do next on, on the next uh, hours is to decide on the final solution so from all of these solutions which one is the one we put the bet that mm -hmm. we want to test uh, with the users and, and validate and so for that this is done in a, in a few steps so first of all all the participants should review the, um, the solutions and this is where, where it helps to have them next to each other so having them on the wall or one mirror board not five links to different mirrors true that's good because yeah. otherwise you will be losing the context and, and mm -hmm. they live better when next to each other because you will need to pick one and you can compare them visually super easily and they're in this place you don't need to go through tabs switch links and things like this so that's totally true yeah yeah so on a first step Maybe you might need people who to pitch it, not recommended, but maybe you, you need that to explain to it to the other people. And, and then the next thing you would do is that everyone will review it and you will create a heat map with that. So what that means is that you will get uh, red sticky, red stickers, mm -hmm. or maybe any kind of red thing on the digital. So people will review it and just put red dots on the things they find interesting. And they can put as much as possible. And they don't need to be whole design. They can be like just an avatar. Like I like exactly. the placement of avatar on this idea and then textury on this one, for example. right? Yeah. So or I like this drop down. I like this search box. Yeah. So then in the end, you have all the solutions together and you have a heat map of the areas where there are more interest as uh -huh. well. Yeah. Um, while doing the heat map as well, sometimes you can... Uh, write some questions, or maybe the facilitator can answer. Are there any things that the people should take in consideration when voting? So should they pick, like, do the heat map of things they're just hyped about, so, oh, this is cool idea, or more like, this is cool idea aligned with the long-term goal that we just achieved, or, or whatever. That's like, totally, that's what totally true. Model, model that's there? totally true. So long-term goal and can we questions, both of them should be somewhere near as well, and we should remind participants to check them out because you're totally right. Maybe there's a solution that is super cool, but has nothing to do with the... Yeah, or maybe way. it's not doable because of some of how may I, we, and then the we can decided list. can, can list, <laughs> sorry, yeah, yeah, the can list, uh, that we maybe earlier already discussed that, hey, impossible if we hit this wall, then the whole project is in, in, in problems. So. Yeah, like maybe, can, maybe one can we use uh, can we do it with current technology? And maybe there's an idea that's not current yeah, technology, yeah. so yeah, we should not go go for that one. Okay, so you look at the long-term goal you set up for yourself, um, the canvas, and you try to pick the elements you really resonate with your brain and the, the two things that we just mentioned, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Here you're not making a decision, you're kind of analyzing as a group yeah. everything. Yeah. Um, and then after that, you will start uh, making decisions, people and the decider. And the decider here as well uh, takes an important role. Okay. I remember yesterday you were asking, do we really need it? And yes, we do. Why? Because uh, the in design sprints, momentum is important yeah. to move forward and to actually bet for something and test it. So we don't have we don't want to have this situation where we are stopped because we didn't make a decision. Yeah. So okay. there's a, a few key moments where the decider has like the last word just to make sure that we move forward, let's okay. say. Yeah. And what the decider picks then? Because like the collaborators pick the components, and let's say we have like a lot of them with the heat map, what's more popular, what's not. So does the decider voting on the whole idea, the, con the concept from the idea or five of them? Like, what is being voted by the decider? So, so before being before the decider voting, there's another exercise we, where each of the participants will choose one. So okay. they will make their own decision. 
So each one of them will pick one of the solutions, their favorite one, and after doing that, they will explain to the decider why they did that. Okay. And this part is super important because we are informing the decider, we are giving him the full information so he can make the... Yeah, educated decision. Exactly, exactly. Um, and then to make the final decision, uh, normally you can give the decider like a, maybe one vote for a full um, solution, and then maybe two other to pick that's, other parts from another one or account. combine them. Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes one solution is not perfect. So maybe it's like, yeah, I like this one, but if we could take this from this other one and put it in here, then we can have like yeah. a perfect one. Yeah. yeah. The, the, this is exactly the hack we've been doing. And actually on one of the sprints, I again asked if I need to be the decider and then asked people <laughs> what I should pick, but the other way around. So uh, just for product managers that may feel weird on the design sprint. Um, <laughs> it's like, so on one of the design sprints, I had in mind that I like this idea with three different solutions added to them and we couldn't pick all of them. So, so basically I approached the collaborators, talking with them like, hey, I understand what you said. I, I like all of this. Can we create another one right now? Like, <laughs> Can we pick? I know it's a bit against, but trying to put it in like, you know, 10 minutes or 12, just to explain from the decider, for example, perspective, saying like, okay, I got your arguments, but still, could we do something else? Or can we mix match some of the stuff? Or once I also picked something that was super unpopular, but that's the other problem. <laughs> but <laughs> that's fine. The dots that's fine. We're moving forward with, with just a bet. In the end, yeah. it's just a bet sure. of what we want to test. So yeah, that, that's totally fine. And yeah, there can be some conversation and then there can be some tweaks, but we should be careful of not starting from scratch again yeah. to do another solution because then we lose all the momentum no, and it's it, never It needs to be like the ideas that's there and, and yeah, let's not create another prototype. That's true. That's yes, true. yes, exactly. Um, this part is the, one of the coolest one with right. all the solutions and choosing it. And it's a risk, to, a risk to think that we finish here. Okay. Like, okay, we have the yeah, solution. Because in theory, we could say, you know, we, have, we know what we want to have designed. We know what our goal are. And you say, you come to product designer and say, like, hey, you have UI kit, no? It's like, exactly. can you make me these forms now? Because it's easy, no? You just put CSS on top. Um, so you say, this is not the end. This is not no. the end, no. no okay. It could. I mean, you could take it and give it to a designer. But the thing is that you want to validate the thing in four days. True. So you will have one or two people doing a prototype in just one day. Okay. So for that, the level of detail that you have right now is not enough. So okay. the next day, the person doing the prototype is going to have so many questions. He's not going to make it in, in okay. one day. So, so this is why. What, what shall we do then from having this? idea of a solution to, you know, um, filter that down to the designer so she or he can design without necessarily coming back for every five minutes about the question. So basically, since you're going to test it, you want to actually have the screens you want to test or the sure. steps or the, um, or the use case, kind mm -hmm. of. So that's the next, next thing you're, you're going to do. Uh, you're going to do an exercise with the, with the flow you want okay. to test. So each person will will draw a flow, a flow. Well, not will draw. Will create a flow with all the steps. So one post-it will be one step, and like one step can be one action. So for instance, a user uh, looks for a word on Google. Our uh, result appears. Shop, it's there. Enter the product. Buy the product. Check Similar out. Similar to the to the journey we were drawing on the first day, no? So yes. on the first day we also do draw probably a bit wider one, mm -hmm. and then we zoom to a part of it. Exactly, and now we're zooming to a part and, and putting a spec a specifically one one use case. Okay, yeah. and... Okay, it's not a question, it's gonna be a tip. So... Go for it. What's important in this one is, again, don't go micro-managing the flow. So you don't need uh, login jumps, three decision trees, there are <laughs> no. different user types and things like this. So it's like, if you're thinking how to build uh, amazing EHR software, so electronic health reference, uh, one million of use cases we both know too much about it, uh, it's much better to pick, like, a, King use case you want to have. Mm -hmm, so let's mm -hmm. say we we will tell that the biggest opportunity we see inside the electronic health record is the way the doctors share, share that with patients. Mm -hmm. So yes, we want to attack each other, we want to make it better, but for the design screen, let's maybe just share from 
I created a note, what I need to do now to, for a patient to receive it. So then it's an easier use case, especially later for the validation and drawing conclusions, because if you will have paths in the testing prototype, you will get conclusions about different paths, and then it's getting much trickier to really like you know wrap yourself wrap your mind around the idea and the results of the testing as a product person you may be like mm, not that scientific at all anymore. yes so yes it needs to be super uh, filtered exactly <laughs> super good tip yeah um as well if you do super complex one you might end up trying to find trying to recruit different profiles for the user that's gonna be super complex yes so, that, yeah. that won't work Actually, now when I'm thinking, super not scripted. Um, <laughs> uh, Shape up methodology that we talked about. Check out that episode. Uh, pr proposes like in one of the one of the steps uh, on the shape up process. So when you are creating descriptions of a problem that the team gonna later work on, um, they have this technique of trying to build the interaction map. Uh -huh. It's kind of landing at the end as a you know use case map, but how they do it, it's more like you start from the screen and then you do amendments to the screen. So mm -hmm. I have a finished episode screen, and then I will have a button to share, button to edit, button to delete, button to close the window, and then if I click send, something should happen, and things like this. So you more put interactions and needed elements on each screen. Uh, what I'm saying about it is like if you do that for this roadmap, you can super easily remove everything that's not interesting for you. So <laughs> if you're talking now about sharing, we don't need the delete button and you don't need to think about editing state because we are just sharing that. So you can easily remove the parts that are not needed and tailor this this flow of the user. To exactly just the things that yeah, you want to test. Only the buttons that should work basically. And then because I'm going to that because we will go to testing. I mean, testing it is crucial to not have too much candy stuff around the main flow. Yes, yes. So because in years I, I was testing prototypes when you know I had buttons that were not clickable and like nine out of ten times the people will click on the nine clickable and it's like oh, why that, that doesn't click. And so yeah, yeah. Don't look at this button, please. You shouldn't be <laughs> trying to delete it. Your the task was to send it. Please don't delete it now. But people will start. And, just breaking, so it's, yeah. it's really good. So, super well focused. So, these exercises help a lot to that. So, basically, each person is going to, yeah, put one post it per one step, and then we will choose on one. Same voting as, mm -hmm. as, as usual. And, and after this, we will have, we will have our solution and we have the flow we want to test in post it. Yeah. And now, the last part comes, which is super exhausting as well, which is okay. Now we need to do a storyboard, so an actual wireframe of each of the steps yeah. for the um, for the user flow we want to test. We mean collaborate collaborators, facilitator or a designer comes like in No, the all the participants. Everybody. Yeah, it, it it, it's more helpful if the designer participating in the um, in the sprint is there in that yeah. activity. That would be more mm -hmm. helpful. And if the person who will be prototyping the next day is there, then that's that's amazing. That's the best. Well, one other hack that worked once is like if you make the designs modular. <laughs> so you you know you take a piece of paper that's A4 and by chance the elements of the UI can be cut from it. You can actually map those states on the board pretty fast based on the design that the people prepared at the end of the first day. That's a super good one and it actually helps because when you start and it's like, okay, now let's draw the storyboard, you're facing a completely empty thing, maybe with just eight squares or something. But if you at least have some parts of the solution, as you said, yeah. that you just cut it and paste it, you at least have something to say. Yeah, you so. will have the sidebar here, so then you need to think what's going to be on the right on the, from the sidebar, but at least you can paste yourself a sidebar or mm -hmm. then rewrite it. But th this is this is something that also saw the um, design screens. Yeah. And basically, oh, in digital, yeah. when I'm thinking, it's even easier, no? What, it's, what? In digital, it would be even easier. In digital, it's easier, yeah, yeah. For Just that one. cut those parts from the image. Now I'm going to yes. be doing that in video all the time. <laughs> well, it's easier if the person who's putting it there is uh, used to the tool as well. Because sure. if not, then it's going to be also crazy, true. yeah. OK, so we are drawing the solution. Yes, yeah. yeah. So here you don't need all the participants. So maybe some of the participants could already left after the, the solution and maybe just half of them stayed or something. Uh, and one person or two 
one or two persons can be drawing the thing. And here there is discussion because there's the people talking. How should this look like? Let's remove this. Let's put that. So we try to map all of the states, right? So yeah, exactly what you want. If you want to test a drop down, we should draw the drop down and the options that are inside. Maybe some people are in parallel are checking wording or are looking for content. So you want to have as much detail to give it to the person prototyping the, the next day. And this is a long one. Like you can be two hours doing oh, this. Or ten. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it is super similar to the shaping session. Um, mm -hmm. So you need to understand, this is the moment you need to understand all of the details that you'll be skipping out to this moment. You need to understand all of the limitations because, yes, we, you know, the paper took autocomplete, but then you will find out that mm, that that easy to make it autocomplete at the end and things like this. So it, yeah. it, it is important. And here I would, again, do you do the shaping exercise with screen and amendments. Because mm -hmm. this will help you again to minimize the number of elements you're going to have on each screen that are unnecessary for you. Yes. Uh, for a given yes. case that may be just, you know, coming because the rest of your system works on applications. So you should have some navigation and stuff and getting back and up from and things like this. But maybe not for a test. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't care about those yeah. elements really. So here it's super important to keep in mind all the time the can we, exactly what we want to test. So the flow and the can is all the time. So if the facilitator sees that people are like getting into too much detail of something that we're not actually testing. Yeah. So try and to with whom, it. so the part that you said. So it is important to keep in mind with whom you're going to be testing. So mm -hmm. you don't try to rein them. Because if you will not have the end user in mind and the fact that you need to make a test after tomorrow, um, you may over-engineer some parts. Because yes. it's like, and then, you know, everybody in the room will decide, like, oh, this solution is going to be the prettiest, but you will be designing it for the same six days, but, oh, this is the shit. And it's not that important to make it perfect. It's more like, okay, so can we repurpose this, the concepts and still show it to the customers mm -hmm. after tomorrow? So, yeah. And that's it. Here, the workshop, actually, the two days of, work, of workshop, or three if you do it through the book, uh, they're, they're done. Okay, so everybody goes home and now the sad, lonely designer needs to, <laughs> needs to work okay. alone for two days. Yes, when we've done it, the designer was alone, poor yeah. designer. But you can, of course, do two, three people, depending on the size of the prototype. Um, yeah, so you have one day to prototype your solution. Here, if it's like a digital thing, having a UI kit, it's amazing. Yeah. So you will work so much faster. But actually, you can prototype almost anything. So in the book, you see examples of how they prototype a robot or how they prototype like a clinic reception. Basically, you just want to do something that represents yeah. your idea. Yeah, and then it's important. It's back, back to you know one on one of user testing. It's like it's named prototype, not mockup yet, and not working solution for a yes. reason. So yes. just a prototype. So actually, if you produce only a balsamic screens it's still fine. I mean, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's go they're going to be a bit prettier than whatever the guys drew the day before, but it's, it's more about showing a flow and letting the user to go through the flow you imagine exactly. than having it high fidelity. So I, I would actually recommend a lot of people to work in a lower fidelity than the higher one, just to, you know, if magically at the end of the day you have additional two hours to design, then this is your time for high fidelity, but until then... For sure, it will depend on the resources you have. If it's a bit more high fidelity, it would be a bit better because uh, the course. user will feel it more real. But yeah, uh, here it's about momentum, yeah. as you said. So low fidelity works as well. Yeah, I meant like, you know, in our case, we have UI kit. So it's super if, quick. If you, you need to do form, you can do repetitive screens or some parts. Mm -hmm. Easy, let's say. It's not super easy, but it's easier than if you would need to do it from the scratch or you wouldn't have UI kit. Um, so, so my point is like sometimes maybe it's just better to take bootstrap. Yeah. Even if I didn't even like it, just take bootstrap and design with bootstrap. Yeah. It's gonna yeah. be okay. Or totally. Or any other framework or something that like has the buttons that are not crazy. So if you will try to do it with you know word art from word, <laughs> it will not work. Or yeah. maybe oh, it would. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Probably it could. Like, it depends on what you are designing. Because if you're designing a service or a process. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't need even this, you know, clickable prototype at yeah. the end. Yeah. Because for a service, it's more about different actors and moments mm -hmm. in time, so you can show it actually on the pitch deck, I guess. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, so so here we have yeah. Do you have any tips for those prototypers? Uh, oh, maybe before you mentioned it's one or more. So how how would you handle this in like a team? So you had the design sprint, and there was hopefully one designer at least that's going to be uh -huh, designing yeah. later and put it there, and then should this person meet with like the other designer and say like, hey, we have eight hours to design, so let's spend three on me talking to you, and then for the five we're gonna design, or you split it, how would you I guess it? you would have two designers. Yeah, or five. I mean, let's say okay. you have more designers to design the prototype than the ones that collaborated in the design sprint. Okay, if you have two designers, I guess you can invite them as participants. Okay. If you have five, then probably not. So yeah, probably I would spend, I don't think it's gonna be long, because if you have done the storyboard uh, exercise already well sure. should be quite detailed, right? So yeah. the designer who participated on the um, on the workshop can explain it to to the others early in the morning. Shouldn't take that long, and then they can split into parts. Yeah, you're right. Actually, when yeah. thinking about it, the heat board, uh, the 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 storyboard plus the mockups created, yeah. it should be pretty good brief, even if you will get someone like you know totally green in the topic. Exactly. So when you get to the prototype, the designer is not finding a solution. Yeah, true. It's just, just basically creating a prototype from an already thought solution. And creating a prototype doesn't take yeah, that it's much. It's a UI design. Exactly. Like, no, yeah. true. Nice. I never th like thought about it this way. I was ever like always sure that it's that you know you go to home and you look at it and like okay, let's now move it to like a understandable form and then you start code, uh, designing. Uh, but yeah, yeah, true. It, it sells those artifacts. Like uh, executing, basically. You're just executing, yeah, so yeah. it should be easy to explain and it should be quite easy to do in a in a one day. Yeah. yeah. If right fidelity was picked. If right, right the, yeah. The, the designer. If not, if you need to think about the solution, then you, you don't have mm -hmm. enough time. And learning this day or... Okay, so this day you just prototype with you or a colleague, you use the artifacts as a, as a brief. Any other things that are happening this day? Well, in parallel, it should be happening that someone is recruiting okay. the user testers for the next day and maybe organizing the timings, organizing the room or the calls or whatever. Uh, yeah. Okay. If, ideally, if you already know uh, the kind of user you want to test with the first day of the workshop, if not the second, then you should start uh, straight away recruiting the participants for the user testing. Yeah. And you need to know how much access you have to customers. So if you have a case that you know that if you want to talk to the customer, recruit someone, it's going to take you three weeks, then start recruiting yes. three weeks before design sprint. It's going to be fine if they will wait. Um, better that niche than at the end of the design sprint, finding out that you have a design solution and nobody And nobody, it. yeah, nobody. And then you, you know, you will start justifying with corridor tests and the compound and things like this, but that's mm -hmm. not the value you should, you should get. So it is really important to think about the recruitment even before, before the design sprint. Just ask yourself a question, am I able to recruit in the worst case in one or two days? Or this will require some operations, maybe mailings and things like this. And, we both have experiences, good and bad, with recruiting customers. Yeah, it's not always camp, easy. So. It's not always easy. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, and as well, what can happen, what can happen to us, so especially you can do it in one day if you're doing a consumer app. Yeah. But if you're doing a super specific app for some super specific professionals, maybe even if you get them, they won't have time the same day for you. Yeah. So this happened to us. So the day of the testing sometimes is more like a three days or a week. Just because they, they, you, you call them, can you come tomorrow? No, tomorrow I'm busy. Yeah, I come to Tuesday. So what, what, what are you going to say now? Yeah, so. yeah exactly. And, but everything depends on the company and the customer size. Yes, Meaning yes. like it's always a good thing to have you know, a feedback circle with your customers. So always having some customers recruited yes, for the next test, yes. even if you don't have anything planned, just having a group of Sponsor users. Now this is like yes. an industry name, sponsor users. Yeah, with sponsor people. users you can totally do it in, in one day. And even if you think you need to extend like two, three days, super important to keep in mind the momentum and that you need to finish. So to, to put yourself And don't in add days. scope to it. So it yeah, doesn't yeah. mean that if you're waiting for tests, this means you have three more days to no, design. No, <laughs> no. The design was finished. Now you're just testing, waiting for this to be tested, but not to add three more buttons because you didn't have time. Right? No, it's, no. It's not for that. Yeah. So, also for product owners, this is not the moment you go to the designer and say like, hey, 
remember this code that we removed? Maybe it's added if we have time. So that's not yeah. this moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a design. Hopefully, we recruited someone. And mm -hmm. then what? They come to the office? They you do it remote? How would you do it? They could come to the office, but nowadays, remote works super well, super fine. And the thing is not... The important thing is not only if they come or if they do it remote, but the way you gather the insights. Mm -hmm. So you should have a shared board, um, if you can, with everyone who participated in the, um, in the workshops. So in the shared board, you will have the features you tested mm -hmm. and the users, so kind of a grid, so okay. the, the features and the users. And you would just be putting posts like things they like and things that, things they don't like. Um, so this way you have it in a super visual way, accessible for everyone and easy to read what's going on. What yeah. things are working and what things are not working. And, that's and those are the answers to our how might we solve, right? Or can we? The can we, the yeah. can <laughs> Sorry, I'm mixing those two. But this is the, those are the answers to can we uh, a lot of times. So it's yes, like, yes. can we make it simple? That was our case. So electronic health record, you have thousands of different fields and data coming. And mm -hmm. we wanted to make it simple. So can we make it simple and useful at the same time? So we know we need this data, but can it be simple at the same time? And it was one of the things we really wanted to test. So answer to this, if the prototype is giving that, was helpful. So again, can we are important. I told you that they are really, really important. Yes, so it's giving you answer to the can we. It's also validating or invalidating features that you probably added to the screen or, mm -hmm. or to the service. And it's, it's already giving you a direction. Mm -hmm. You will already see in the board if you're going in the right direction or not. Yeah, that, that was our case usually to know. It's like we get the feedbacks and we say, okay, those three things not necessarily needed even, so let's keep them. Like my, my sidebar customization is an actual example. We invented it like, what, two years ago? <laughs> yeah. To this moment, we don't have it because in the core design, we found out that everything else was more important than this one. So yes, it's in the prototype from the design sprint well described, but initial tests showed that they said, mm -hmm. like, if I remember correctly, the customers actually said on this one that the data we're showing on the prototype is the data they want. Yes, yes. So then it was amazing for us because from the big project that would include customization, we found out, hey, maybe we don't need to initially. And yeah, we are two years later and still going nice without customizations. So. Yeah, so it gives you a direction, yeah. yeah. And basically, the, what it's called the design sprint, it's finishing here. Okay. So after that, it depends on where you are and which company. Maybe you're giving a report to the customer, or if you're in product like us, you will need to decide what to do next. Yeah, uh, <laughs> as we said at the beginning, you should be working with it next, but then you can have different outcomes. So mm -hmm. you may, maybe it's amazing, and you will be able to just jump into the development with the developers mm -hmm. and start mm -hmm. going with the sprint. Or maybe the result's gonna be, hey, we need next five design sprints, or maybe not design sprints, but other design activities or workshop to, you know, iterate more and go more into the, the detail of the You could do that, like a second, this an iteration design sprint, which can be shorter, so you don't have to do all the activities, mm. but with the feedback you have, you kind of draw the solution again, yeah. kind of repeat, yeah. yeah. Or integrate into Agile, and you go with your yeah. sprints if it's like the idea you want to build or the parts of them, seems like, okay, so let's, let's build it. Other thing that's, I believe, super important, this is kind of, product or someone that is responsible for delivery um, is to be transparent with the team and the designer and everybody else on if you plan to slice it. So thank you, you built me a design that will never build in one sprint, so we will be building them in 20 different projects. This should be transparent to the team. Mm -hmm. So they should understand that, okay, we worked hard, we validated that those things work and we'll still not build them. And they need to understand why, what are the reasons and why you want to do this prioritization. So that's something super important for the product people. Yeah. And, and yeah, just being transparent because as you said at the beginning of the previous episode, there is a social contract that if you go for the design sprint, it's expensive enough that you should ship it or mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. go with the things that you're sure you want to attack and, yeah. and make decisions about, not something that you will spend all of this time and then after that, Someone will come and say, like, ah, nah. let's forget about it. <laughs> <Let's> not <build laughs> We're it. not going to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Or if you're building, because I saw design sprints where you ended uh, after the whole workshop and 
from the whole concept, just one button was cool. And that's fine too. It's just mm -hmm. about being transparent to everybody. That's why you're dropping parts or you want to do only super small scope. Yes, yes. Like we are going to do a design sprint, but since we work on Agile and this is the way we do things, we're going to validate some things, probably not implement the whole solution right away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so, and this is the end of the design sprint, right? But yeah, that's it. That's uh, the four days. I have a tricky question. I hope it's trickier. Maybe it's going to be easy. But so the design sprint, if you look at it from not the details we're talking about, it's like some of you meet and then people tell you what they want and then you draw together and then you have a design. Isn't uh -huh. it like every design workshop on the planet? Um. I mean, it's like, it's, can you call Design Sprint any design developer product person activity that produces a, a prototype? I'm going to tell you why you think like this. Because Design Sprint is based on design thinking. And okay. design thinking is the basic design process. Yeah. So it has all the elements of the basic design process that you can do as an individual or that you can do as a team. But if you take design thinking just like that, it's quite broad. You can do a lot of different activities. You can do it like different ways. So if you're not super experienced with that, it's difficult to say, okay, now we're going to do design thinking. Mm -hmm. Where do we start? It's super difficult. Okay. But if you take the design sprint, it's quite easy because it's already defined, every detail, the timing, the red stickers, whatever. So then you can apply a full design process, so a full design in thinking just process four days. in just four days. Okay. So it's so, like an yeah. implementation method of... Exactly. Of it. It's like for developers, it's like in writing in Vue.js versus vanilla JavaScript. So mm -hmm. yeah, vanilla JavaScript allows you to do everything that Vue allows you, but it is quite kind of easier or nicer to mm -hmm. do in mm -hmm. framework. So. I, I now I understand the difference. Yeah, the only part that might be a bit missing in the actual process is the research before. You yeah. cannot just start without without any research, and you normally would do research on a design thinking or a design process. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's really yeah but good. adding the research into like four days sprint that that would be crazy. It's yeah. even if you want to. It's uh, partially why we switch to longer cycles or sprints than two weeks. It's like. Try that even in Agile or in yeah. Scrum. So in two weeks you want to research, design, and develop. So it it never co-occurs. It's always like one after another. There is like mm -hmm. some handoff mm -hmm. at some moment. So yeah, a little bit always. Yeah. So if you can skip it for activities like this, this is this is good. And you know, research. We should do one episode with actual researcher. We talked yeah. a lot about <laughs> research, but never met any. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I would say it should be also also always. Like upfront, like two steps behind, like ahead of you, know? mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. just you know, always being discovering and coming with the ideas. But this is a note to the uh, researcher who will invite someday, maybe <laughs> here. Someday, crush, we crush that with that person. Yeah. Yes. Um, so that's it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe if someone is listening and wants to like start a dis like do a design sprint, like how, where do I start? Um, so of course the book is super, I recommend everyone to read the book, um, but if you need to do it like kind of quick, like from the one day to the other, there's the YouTube videos from AJ and Smart, I will paste the link. Okay. So we, in those ones they are super well explained, the, all the activities and they are for free, so that would be super useful if you need to do something, or if you're invited to a design sprint as well. Yeah, to could just understand what's to going, just understand what's going to happen. What's going on, yeah. And the book I recommend, and yeah, that's it. Well, there's also the certification as well, but that's not story. And if you have any questions, feel free to use the comment section on YouTube or yes. send us an email to, to facetpodcast and gmail.com um, if you're <laughs> listening on me without the video. Yeah. Um, we are always open to have any conversation about the topics we talk about, so let exactly. us know. Exactly. So, yeah, let's say we are on Twitter. Yes, at uh, Two Facet Podcast. Yes. We are on YouTube. Uh, where are you right now seeing it and I don't know you that you were out to YouTube? I don't know <laughs> it either. <laughs> I think it's like super hard. We need to call YouTube and say to them uh, like you need to yeah. do human readable URLs. Yes, and we have an email as well. Yeah, twofacetpodcast at gmail.com and uh, actually all of those contact info are also on our Anchor page. So if you go to anchor.fm slash twofacet, you will get the link to YouTube, Twitter and <laughs> all other places that we don't know about existing so exactly. yeah um so i guess this is this is all for today yes. um thank you everybody for listening and watching 
Uh, please remember to subscribe and comment if you subscribe have any questions. <laughs> I know we are coming to this moment as YouTubers, but this is actually helping us a lot, having, having new subscriptions. Um, and see you soon in the next episode. See you soon. See you. Bye. Bye.